Rise and grind. It's butt kicking time. Oh, dang. I really have to use the bathroom right now. All right, time to take a shower. Let's get in and get out. But while we're there, let's quickly say hi to God just real quick. Okay, I'm out. I got to get the kids up. The kids really need to get ready for school. Oh, dang. They have to be fed. Great. Babe, she's already on it. She's the best. Anna's cooking them breakfast. Got to keep going. Got to keep going. Got to keep them on pace. Kids, are you ready for school? Hold up real quick. I have to use the bathroom again. Church, stop judging. Get in the car, guys. It's time to go. We're always late. Every morning, we need to do better at getting there on time. All right, the kids are dropped off. Whew. I have a minute to breathe for just a second because I just forgot Ava needs to be at school early today. Leadership, leadership. Okay, let's go. Ava, get in the car. Don't forget to kiss your wife. You know if you don't kiss her before you go, there's consequences to pay tomorrow. Okay. Woo. <sighs> She's there. Wait, my calendar. Check your calendar. Why am I feeling this? Oh, I forgot. Brunch with Christopher. Get there, get there, get there. Hey, Chris, you know I love you more. Okay, that's done. Man, that was a great brunch, but it's time to get to church. Why? Because I need to prep. Prep, 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 prep. It's time to sermon prep. All right, let's get this done. But first, pray. Listen to God. Okay, all right, that's it. All right, three seconds. Listen to God. All right, time to prep. Prep, 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 prep. Let's sermon prep. We gotta hit out of the park. Everyone is expecting the message of the year. All right, gotta go. It's 2.15. 2.15, 2.15, 2.15. Shut it down. I gotta run because I gotta pick up the kids at 2.40. All right, I'm going. But there's traffic. Silliness, it's 2.15. There's traffic already. Come on, you guys. Okay, I get there. It's 2.40 because Kai hates it when I'm late. But now they're hungry. Kids are always hungry. Man, bottomless pit. Where are we going to go? We don't have time to cook. Well, guess what? Then we're going to go through drive through grab the food, go back to church. Guys, hang out in the kids' ministry while I do this. All right, I'm sermon prepping. I'm sermon prepping. I'm sermon prepping. This is going to be a great message. God is on the move. Oh, I got to go. It's time to pick up Ava, but it's 445, and I got to get there at 5. Get on the road. Traffic again. Salinas, get out of the way. Okay. Okay, I pick her up. All right, it's 5 o'clock. She wasn't waiting for too long. Now it's time to go home. Now it's time to eat dinner. Okay. We're good. We're running on time. Shoot, I forgot. Chloe, Chloe, Chloe. Yes, dad. We forgot to feed the pig. Get in the truck. Let's go. We got to feed the pig because we have to be back to get you guys on time for boxing. Get back home. Kai, are you ready? Yes, dad. Do you have everything? Yes, dad. Kai, you forgot your gloves. Dang it, we have to turn around. Go pick them back up. Okay, let's get going. Boxing at 7. I have an hour 45. Time to run some errands. Get back. 8.45. Grab the kids. Kids, when we get home, take a shower and get your rear ends in bed. Hey, babe. Yes? Okay, I got it. Okay, I'm going to sleep them. Levi's out. Woo, finally. Hey, babe, married at first sight. Let's check it. Okay, we get to lay down. Give her a kiss. Say goodnight. And you know what? Set the alarm because tomorrow we're doing it all over again. You ever feel like that? You ever feel like that guy? Like you're just going, and you're going, and you're going. Or you could be like my son Levi on Wednesday morning. He's outside on the trampoline, bouncing around, as cute as can be. And I was like, I'm going to check in on him. Hey, Levi, what's on the schedule today? What do you got? Like, what's your 5 o'clock? I just want to be ready because we're going to have dinner around 4.45. Oh, you got something at 11? No, you know what his response was? Dad, dad. <laughs> Maybe you're like Levi and you've got all the time in the world, but if we could be honest, someone say, keep it 100. Some of us look like that guy. Going and going and going. And most of us are rushed because life is always speeding up as you go and go and go. And we feel overwhelmed. We feel angst because of all that we have to do. And there's never enough time in the day. Have you ever caught yourself saying that before? Are we awake, church? Have you ever caught yourself saying this? To somebody in response from asking you, how's it going? I'm busy. How many people said that this week? I'm busy. Raise your hands if we're being honest. Why has that become the norm of who we are claiming to be all the time? 
And there's reasons, I believe it's psychological reasons why we want to say busy. Because we want our life to matter and amount to something. And if I tell you that I'm doing nothing, you're going to be like, man, that guy's lazy. That girl's lazy. Or it really is because you've packed, crammed the schedule so much. And there's a reason behind that as well, psychologically. Good morning, church. Welcome to Venture, where we keep it a thousand. And if you are new here today, we want you to know that we love you and that we are going to give you amazing messages from the platform, not so you can giggle and laugh, but so that you can put it on and live it out. So that there can be some change. Someone say change. So that when people saw us three years ago, they see a different person today. For some of you, it was three weeks ago, and they're already seeing a different person today. Amen? Sanctification is real, but God is not going to force himself on you. We get to choose. The title of the message today is when you're too busy for what really matters most. And I want you to hear this. I want to pose this thought before I pray. What if I told you the greatest enemy to your life right now? What what if the greatest enemy to your life you want may be the life that you're living right now? Would you pray with me? God, first of all, thank you for letting me catch my breath. But thank you for being kind. But Lord, let us as your followers not take that kindness to as you are a pushover God because you are both the lion and the lamb. And God, I believe that there are things in us that you want to deal with, including myself, that only you can deal us with. Only you can be the one to change us. Lord, you know our lives, people around us, our parents, our, our leaders, those that we've allowed to speak into my life. They tell uh, our lives, they tell us things, but sometimes we ignore or we're quick to answer and we don't want to hear it. But God, your word, when we hear your word, it's so hard to ignore. It brings conviction. And when we look ourselves in the mirror, there is a reality that we need to deal with. And so, God, I know there's a better way with rhythms in our life. And, Lord, I'm praying today that you would reveal yourself to us so that we can practically take this message and apply it to our lives. We love you. We praise you. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, all God's people said. I deserve that sip of water right there. I just want to say this before I preach this message today, because we're in this series titled what? A Better Way. That when I was preparing for this message, the Lord spoke, to, uh, spoke this message to me first. And there are some things that I'm talking about and thinking about and processing about and reminders as I'm even saying a couple times this week to people that are asking me, how are you? And I say, I'm busy. I even told Anna, I said, babe, I think we've built a culture where even people will say it for us. Oh, it's okay if you can't make it, you're busy. Have people done that in your life? So I just want to keep it real as we always do because I want you to know that this message spoke to me first before I spoke it back to you. Amen? And this fast-paced lifestyle. How many of y'all know about the fast-paced lifestyle? And it goes faster and faster and faster as you go into Gilroy and Morgan Hill and San Jose, right? And Santa Clara and San Francisco. It just feels like it gets faster and faster and faster and faster. And in life, we will deal with difficult moments, right? Especially with people that we love or people in our life. So when that happens, when that happens in our life, when things start to go south, and with those relationships that we have, we are quick in the moment. 
whether it's in person, face to face, or on the phone, or maybe even a a response to a DM, we are quick to cut people's words off. We are quick to speak over, and we are fast to get angry. James 1.19 is a great reminder for all of us this morning that we need to quickly listen to. It says, my dear brothers and sisters, be quick to, say it with me, church, listen. Slow to speak and slow to get angry. Now, don't nudge the person next to you, okay? When you hear that, you're like, yeah, I need to do that more with my spouse. I need to do that more with my boyfriend. I need to do that more with my kids. I need to do that more with my kids. I need to do that more with my kids. I almost said a fourth one because I have four, amen? <laughs> Levi's not there yet with me, though. Dada. How do you get mad at that? We are so fast in our relationships to cut people off. And so what James is saying is this is relational, but the relationship that you're thinking about is the one that we all think about right away. It's with people that are walking, living, breathing, right? They're human beings, whether they're on the road or you share a a cubicle right next to them or, or maybe they live in your house or maybe they're your neighbors. Anybody have nosy neighbors? There's a fence line for a reason. Come on, weirdo. I'm just joking. We don't have weird neighbors like that. Matter of fact, I love all our neighbors. Are you with me, guys? It isn't easy. I told Anna the other day, babe, I need to tent my truck windows. She's like, why? Because I can't stand people that don't know how to drive right. And it shows in my expressions. People are like, why haven't you put a venture sticker on your truck yet? Because people won't come to the church. (laughs) I might have to do that just for some accountability, amen? If I tent my windows, don't judge me. It's not just because of that, okay? And when we're consistently on the go, this word is good, amen? We must keep it at an arm's length, always, to remind ourselves. I told my marriage counselor, I need to tattoo tattoo that thing on my forearm so I can constantly read it. Because when we're rushing, we get irritable. Our bandwidth is to the max. It's stretched out. We're jumping from one thing to the next thing. And what's the second relationship that James is talking about? We must not forget this. It's our relationship with God. Are you with me, church? we got to be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. And I mean, there are times when we're going to come to him with everything that we are, and that's fine. We don't want to stay there. We don't want to stay idle there. But there is a movement when you go to God internally. The Holy Spirit shifts. And there's some things that start to take shape in your heart. So this morning, what is your posture toward God? Some of you are being honest. You're like, no, that's, that's pr- pretty accurate. I'm, I'm pretty frustrated right now. I'm pretty upset. To you, I say we must be quick to quiet ourselves and to listen to the voice of God. We must be present in the moment with him. Church, there's a better way, amen? There's a better way, amen? This world does not teach this better way, but the word is truth, and it teaches us. Last week, Pastor Anna brought a great message. If you believe that, come on, give her a round. And she said, oftentimes we love the truth of God, right? We love the truth of Jesus, but don't really want to acknowledge the way. Someone say the way. We want the promises, and the promises are going to come for some of the promises, but there's some verses before those promises that we are to put on. But for some people, that might be too sacrificial, I don't want to have to die to myself and feel that way. I'm entitled to how I feel and how they made me feel. So I'm going to do what I want, how I want, whenever I want to do it. Why would I submit to him? 
Why would I do that? I can't be that sacrificial. Well, if you are a believer, we follow Jesus. Amen? And let's think about his life. He was definitely sacrificial. Would you say yes to that? He showed us in the Gospels who he was and how he lived. He was a man of integrity. And he faced the same temptations and challenges and hardships. Not only that, the most brutal death that someone can take all the way to the cross. So if you're having a hard time living sacrificial nowadays, I want to encourage you, if you were a follower of Jesus, to go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read the Gospels for yourself. Because you might have a posture change after reading what Christ has done for us. Amen? When you read the Scriptures while you're there, you see that he did some amazing things. He was a disciple maker. Someone say disciple maker. Not just like one or six or eight or ten, but twelve. Twelve disciples. Can you imagine the leadership that it took to develop these twelve men as they followed him, as they walked beside him? Someone say walked. As they, as they saw the things that Jesus did. He preached God's word. He loved on all people. Not, this, not just those that were for the message, but those that were even against it. He healed people, right? He did this work fearless, fearlessly. And, and, and he, uh, he traveled consistently, like all, all kinds of travel. I mean, I, I can just imagine how many miles that he put on by walking. And he fulfilled 351 Old Testament prophecies. As you think about that, I want you to jot this down. Are you ready? Jesus never once ran. Jesus was busy, but he never rushed. He never said, hey guys, come on, pack it up. We got to go now. You never heard him say that. He wasn't telling Thomas like, hey, did you, did you call the Uber already? Did, did, you, did you get it coming? Because you know, we got to go. No, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm sorry they didn't have the donkey. Did you order the Mustang? You know, pay a little bit more. We got to go. He never said, we're running out of time. You know, we're a little bit behind schedule. Pick up the pace. Boys, come on. Jesus never once ran. Are you listening this morning, church? Are you awake this morning, church? Mark 2.14 says this, as he, Jesus... Jesus, he is Jesus, walked along. He saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collection booth. Come, be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. If Levi was following an unrushed Jesus, then I've got to believe that Levi was unrushed himself. If we follow an unrushed Jesus, then why are we always in a rush ourselves? Some of us find ourselves in the most unhealthiest rhythms. We're rushed, we're stressed, we're overwhelmed, we're, we're exhausted, trying to get it all done. And when you can't get it all done, and one day you feel like a what? You feel like a failure. But what if God all along is trying to tell you, this is not how I created you to live your life. There's a reason why there's a Sabbath. There's a reason why there's a rest day. And some of us have a hard time just getting an hour with God. You might find yourselves like me at times already waking up in a rush and I'm in the shower and let me just visit you for a moment, God. But when I jump out, I'm, I'm on my way. Okay? But maybe there's no carved out time that is so important for our walk with him. There's a better way. Jesus invites you to come to him. Can I teach this morning a little bit? 
Someone say invitation. I want to give this thought before I teach. What is an invitation? Something that you receive and you can either take it, go or deny it and say no. I want you to think about that because Jesus invites us. God invites us through his son, Jesus. Okay. And, and, and when I say this, I want you to understand he's a gentleman. He's not going to press himself on us. So when you read Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, it says this. Then Jesus says, come to me. Someone say invitation. All of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke fits perfectly and the burden I give you is light. See, this was written to the Jews at this time who were under enormous pressures Due to religious expectations and legalities, there was a lot of legalism things that were happening or legalistic things that were happening uh, to them that was being laid on them by false religious leaders. That was the cause of their stress in that moment. But if you pause to think right now, my question to you is, what has you so overwhelmed right now. What has you overwhelmed today? Maybe if you're being honest, it's because you choose to consistently say yes to people. Anybody can say yes to that in here? That was a trick question. See, some of you are like, I'm not going to fall into that trap. Some people in this room, because a, there's a good amount of people in here, we like to people please. So it's hard to say no, and it's easy to say yes. You might be saying yes to a person, and this person you feel in your emotion is good, but in your spirit, you know they're not. And you know it and you know it, but you keep going back to them and it's wrecking your life. Your yes might be to something that you're trying to numb because there's pain in your life. And it might be a habit or an addiction that you keep running to. And every time you swallow it or every time you drink it or every time you do this thing over and over again, you feel shame. Or maybe it's not necessarily something bad, but it's a crutch. And it's a crutch so you don't have to deal with the pain and the mess in your life. And honestly, that could be your calendar. I have heard people say before, I'm just trying to pack it so I don't have to deal with it. If I slow down, I have to process it. But if I just go and go and go some more, by the time I hit the house, I I hit my bed and I'm out and I get up and I do it all over again. When you do these things, it's causing more pain and more stress and more heartache. And when you put things before God, let me tell you, it's causing sin in your life. Have no other gods Before me, the word of God says. When you read verse 29, it says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I'm humble and gentle and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus is taking a portion out of the Old Testament in Jeremiah 6.16. And Jerusalem was experiencing disaster during this time because of their direct disobedience. So listen to what the word of God says. So now the Lord says, stop right where you are. Look for the old godly way and walk in it. Directions. Travel its path and you will find rest for your souls. Listen to what it says. But you reply, no, that's not the road we want. I bet some of us 
We haven't said that out loud. But in our decision making and how we live our life, we've said it with where we've gone and what we've done and what we've chosen. The yoke that Jesus is referring to, and Pastor Anna broke this down a little bit, and she showed this picture of the yoke, and it's for two animals. It could be beast or oxen, large animals that this, this device goes around the neck of one animal and also connects to the neck of another animal. And during this time, you would understand, if you're living in, in this time, this, 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 this picture that Jesus was trying to explain about because it was an, uh, an agrarian culture, meaning they understood the land and the farming and, you know, they, they understood the crops. And this is what they would uh, be able to understand in, in, in this illustration. And so you would take a more veteran or seasoned um, animal and you'd hook it into one of the yokes and you would take the more green, a rookie, someone that hasn't, you know, been a part of the work yet. And you would go ahead and attach the other yoke onto that one and, and you would get the, the, the senior ox to move and the young one would move and it would tend away. And through time and through time and through time, it would learn and learn and learn until you could take them off. And now that ox itself would now know what to do. Are you tracking with me, church? Through this picture, Jesus is inviting us to take his yoke, to follow his way, the way. And when we do, we will experience his rest. Say that with me. Say rest. (laughs) When we are rushing, when we are putting things before him, just trying to go, 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 we miss it. And we miss the rest that he so direly wants for you and me as his followers. Question I want to pose today. If Jesus wasn't in a rush, why are you? Could you be possibly be running from your past failures, insecurities, hurts, abuse, or pain, or maybe it's something that you're trying to run toward. Maybe you're trying to rise and grind. It's butt kicking time. Maybe you've caught yourself saying, if the devil doesn't take any days off, then I won't either. Maybe it's the success and accolades that you want because all your life you just wanted to feel noticed. You wanted somebody to love you. Like me, I've come from a broken home and there were times in my life as a young person that I knew that there was something missing and I was just yearning for my father's love. And thank God we have a better relationship today. But you just want to, to, to just somehow, there's just this, 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 this thing that, you know, when you, when you feel like you've accomplished something and, and that's what started to fuel you as you got into high school and you got into college and then you started working and you started being noticed at the work parties and you were the one getting called up and everyone's cheering for you and And so that was your drug. And then you started seeing money. And you used to just be okay with money, but then you started falling in love with it. And now it's like, I just want more. You said to yourself once before, if I could just get four grand a month, I'll be good. And then that wasn't enough. And then you're like, if I just get five, if I just get six, if I just get 100 grand a year, if I get 250 grand a year. It just keeps going and going and going. And we forgot, to, we forgot how to be content because we're not content in Christ. And that's where we should be content. But if I have more, possibly more likes, more followers, I want to get TikTok famous. I promise you, if your 438 followers don't see a video that day, they're not going to unfollow you. And there's a warning that we all need to listen to. And if you're wise, you'll look at yourself in the mirror and be like, hey, have I kind of lost myself a little bit? Has, have I lost my soul a little bit? Mark 8, 36, 37 says, and how do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul in the process? Is anything worth more than your soul? 
What if the greatest enemy to your life right now is the life that you are living today? But Pastor Matt, you don't realize I just need more time in the day. And if I did, then those things that really mattered most, I would actually prioritize those things. You and I both know, okay? You and I both know that you have time. You just make time for what matters most to you. And so what I want you to write down is this. The solution isn't more time. The solution is more of what matters most. It's more of what matters most. Because if we're being honest, we waste our time on so many things. Nobody in here? No one wastes their time in here, right? No, I've got a great schedule. Let me give you guys some statistics. Okay? And we're going to laugh at some of these or we're going to be like, man, that's for, for, for sure me. Social media, gaming, and anything TV, Comcast, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus. Oh, he's hating on Disney Plus. I love Disney Plus. Okay? Let's start with social media. The average person spends 2.5 hours a day on social media. I said average, okay? If you do the math, that's 912.5 hours a year. Break that down into days, 38 days a year that you're on social media if you're average. Now, if you're above average, like most of us, that's five hours, okay? Double it up. That is 76 days out of the whole year that you're on social media. Or gaming. Someone say gaming. I'm going to pick on the guys for just a second, okay? Okay. Now, this is before you're 21, so I'm going to pick on the, on the young guys and those that are still acting like a young guy. Calling some people out a little bit. When you hit 21, do you know how many hours the average person, the average young man will have already spent on a console? 10,000 hours. That's 416 days. That's one year, one month, and 20 days. But I got really good at gaming. And I have a YouTube channel with 373 followers. My stats are good though, right? What about TV? Someone say TV. Are you awake, church? I know it's a 945 service, but some of us need to respond a little bit better. Amen? Come on. I didn't walk and Olympic walk and (laughs) jog and sprint for you to be like, oh, this sucks. I'm leaving. We spend over 2,700 hours a year binge watching. 2,700 hours. Maybe for you, that's Stranger Things. That's clickbait. It's a good show. Novellas. Anybody watch novellas? That's translated for Spanish soap operas. Some sass when you're watching those things. I don't know what the heck they're saying, but I can tell there's some sass. Or married at first sight. Okay, I'm just the only one admitting. Okay. What's my point? We prioritize things that matter to us. You can be investing that time in reading. Maybe in your relationships. Maybe with your kids. Maybe with your spouse. Maybe with your grandparents. Maybe with your neighbor. Won't you be my neighbor? Are you guys listening to this message? Because if you find yourself in that category where we used to have so much time together, we used to spend so much time together, I used to enjoy those, those moments where we'd go hiking or we'd go out for a random dinner or, or, or we'd plan a dinner. And maybe you find yourself in one or two or all three of those categories. And if you do and that's you, you've got to gut check yourself now. Because above all those relationships, the most important one is God. And you know, because I know, because I am also a follower of God, and I too fall short of his glory, that there are times where I don't put him first, and I feel it. And so does my marriage, and so does my kids, and so does the ministry, and so do my relationships. And that's just me. What about you? Because just like I'm a Christian... For you that are in here today that call yourselves followers of Christ, you too have a responsibility to be just like him. So if he walked, and I'm not just saying get here at, you know, nine, people are going to use this. I'm here at 10 o'clock, Pastor, because I didn't want to rush to get to church this morning. I wanted to be like Jesus. (laughs) Now, this isn't a get out of jail free card because you're not punctual wherever you go. This is a 
it's time to really process, to think about, to look in the mirror, to write down in a journal, to start to pray and ask God, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Are you with me, church? Are you with me, students? Any students in the house today? I see some of y'all. Parents, you're going to love this one. I never have time to do my homework. I, I'm just so busy with school. I'm there six plus hours a day. I'm in leadership. I'm playing sports. I got chores to do. I just, my homework is not that important, dad. Let me see your cell phone. I want to see your screen time average. Just real quick, but don't ask me for mine, okay? No, but for real, we make time for what's most important. I want to apply this to our life today. Some will say application. There's three things that I want you to write down. I'm not going to have it up there, but I wrote this stuff down as I finished my message, and I wanted you to take this, and I want you to run with it. Wait, no, I shouldn't say run. I want you to to, to have a healthy flow with it. Amen? Number one. Someone say number one. Being present in the moment. We need to listen more. We need to see their needs, not just ours. There's something special when you start to listen to people, especially people that really make you frustrated in life. You know there's an underline to that, and it's not you, it's them. And you know there's some things that have happened in their life that are just causing their reaction. It's causing this pain, this depression, this anxiety. What if you, what if you listened and actually felt a little bit of their pain and and had some compassion. Amen? Romans 12, 15 says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. Be present in the moment. Number two, someone say number two. Choose what's important and eliminate what is not. This will help you to say no to the things that are not important at all. And this will help you to say yes to the things that are most important for your life. And number three, Sense God's presence and recognize his voice. I want you guys to take seven days and to try this. But I want us to not just try it without praying about it. And being intentional about that. I'm going to say it again because I hear people. So number one, being present in the moment. Number two, choose what's important. Eliminate what is not. And three, sense God's presence and recognize his voice. If you need it after service, come up here. We'll give it to you. But this is the prayer that's going to be up here on the screen that I want you guys to jot down. It says, God, help me to walk slowly enough to experience Jesus fully and love people deeply. You think we can do that, church? There's three things. Fuel it with prayer. There's power in prayer. Amen? Amen.